we are here today on March 7th, 2012, to interview Ann Wollstonecroft. Ann was born on December 18th, 1917. Also in the room is her nephew, Gary Conklin, our camera operator, Eileen Moran, and I'm Alice LaFour, the library director. Ann served in World War II in the Women's Army Corps, Army of the United States. Her rank was second lieutenant, and she served in various states uh, in the US, Georgia, Alabama, Texas, and Iowa. So Anne, where were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Were you where were you living at the time? I was living in Sable. And why did you join? Patriotism. Did any of your other classmates join with you? No. My two brothers were in the service. Were they Army? Yes. Okay. Why did you pick the, the branch of service? Is it because of your brothers? Yes. So you picked the Army. Do you recall your first days in service? Oh, yes, I do. I recall when I was sworn in and at Grand Central Station. A group of us were sworn in, and uh, we were put on a train. And the train went from Cincinnati, Ohio, to Nashville, Tennessee, to Chattanooga, Tennessee, which was just outside Fort Oglethorpe. It was just over the border from uh, Chattanooga. And that, that was my first assignment. But they certainly mm. took us on a circuitous route. Why did they, did they pick up other people that were uh, yes. all going to the same place? Okay. You, you have something, you want to just hold that up. This was a letter written for you by, you can explain what that is? What did you? Just explain what that letter was. Oh. For. Uh, this was the letter that was submitted by my high school principal when you had to apply and have a couple of recommendations. And uh, he gave me a copy of it. Okay. We'll put that in your record. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, what did it feel like being on that train with all those? Was it men and women going to that, to that? Uh, oh, it was board? just women. Oh, it was just a train full of women. Yes. All going to become. Yes, but they went like this. <laughs> yeah. They were. All, was, was it we, we we thought we thought we were going to the West Coast. It was such a long trip. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were all becoming wax. Is that the right term? Yes. Right. Okay. Um, what did it feel like being on that train with all those ladies? Homesick. Right away, homesick? Yes. Everybody was? I, most people. And you too? Yeah. Oh. You were how old at that point? 25. Okay. Um, so, you were going to boot camp? Yes. What was that like? Well, it was, it was very good. Uh, fortunately, one of the officers took an interest in me. Oh, I, incidentally, I was a ping, cha, ping pong cha, champion of Fort Oglethorpe. Wow. That was great. And they promised me a, a prize, but I never got the prize. Now, you were a tennis player. Yes. In your youth, so that made sense that you became the ping pong champion. Oh, yes. You had a special ability with a racket. I played every game that there was, and I'm paying for it now. Oh, yeah. is that what it... My knees. Oh, your knees. I thought you were going to say your arm, your knees. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, in boot camp, was it, was it difficult? I was home by six. Uh -huh. Yes. How about the training itself? Was it physical, very physical? Well, it wasn't too physical enough for me because I, I was athletic. Yeah. 
that was an advantage you had. But uh, we, the, we were sent from uh, the, uh, sorry, we were sent out from the training camp in three months, and that put me at Fort McClellan, Alabama, on Christmas Eve, which wasn't very nice. My brother, one of my brothers was 19, and he was in Army Specialized Training Program at Georgia Tech. And I tried to get through on the telephone to him, but I couldn't. So it was your first Christmas away from home? So I spent the Christmas Day very unhappy. Uh, do you remember your instructors at uh, boot camp? Beg your pardon? Do you remember any of your instructors at boot camp? Uh, Lieutenant Cooper. Remember her name? Good. Hmm. Was, was that a man or a June woman? June Cooper. June to Cooper. June, a woman? Yes. Was she a tough instructor? No. Oh. She was very nice. In fact, she's the one who recommended me for OC school. Okay. Um, how did you get boot camp? Did you make friends? Did you help each other with the homesickness and all? Oh, yes. yes. Did you stay friends with some of these ladies after the service? Oh, yes. Okay, so we're going on to experiences. Uh, which war did you serve in? What? Which what? war did you serve in? World War II, right? Yes. Okay. And um, where exactly did you go is the next question. Where did you go during your time of service? You mentioned you were in? Fort McClellan, Alabama, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, and William Beaumont General Hospital in El Paso, Texas. Well, in El Paso, El Paso Texas. And your job assignment at first was? What was your job? I, I was... Uh, in an army hospital in, in an office where I was a secretary to a doctor. So did they train you to be a secretary? Is that what the training was for? No, I was in charge of the record safety. It was more... Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly what you would call it. Did you have office training before you went? Did you not? No. Did they teach you what they needed you to know? Oh, yes. They did. Uh, so you became, you worked in the office in the hospital. That was the first assignment? Yes. Okay. I Was there any talk of the wax going overseas? Oh, yes. A friend of mine went to Italy. Yeah. Did you hope to go? They wouldn't let me. Why? They wanted me in the job I had. An opportunity came up and they told you? In fact, my OC orders, when they first came through, they sent them, they sent them back. What is an OC? Office, oh. Officer candidate. They were suggesting you for office, officer candidate school? I was uh, suggested out of basic training, and I was supposed to go in the field for three months and then uh, be sent to, to uh, OC school. And uh, the sergeant major of the hospital, who we used to sat at the same mess table, he said to me, don't get your hopes up, kid. And I said, what? He said, they sent your, order ba your orders back, lack of education. Because it was a different group, of course, but I was doing extracurricular work, close order drill and uh, orientation and things like that. And that was the first sergeant's job, and I guess she didn't want me to leave. But, Did you eventually go? Oh, yes. When was that? How much later? A year. A year later. 
and who approved it finally for you to go? Beg your pardon? Who approved your uh, going to officer candidate school? Well, it, it, I went to work at the office personnel, used to go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, but the paramedics, the ones that worked on the ward, went at 7 o'clock. And, and uh, the, the, the officers came in to inspect, and one of them said, why does this barracks always look better than the other two. And uh, this gal, who was a seven o'clock gal, had just come off a night shift. And she said, don't you, you know? And she, they said, no. She said, Wilson Croft lives here. At eight o'clock, I could go down and straighten all the shades, and I could smooth all the beds and take care of it, because I was a barrack sergeant. And uh, then they sent me to OC school. Is a barracks sergeant, is a sergeant at that point a promotion? I went from private to sergeant. You did? How long did it take between those? Uh, uh, they upgraded? Six months. In six months you became a sergeant? Yes, okay. but I didn't, I wasn't a corporal or I went from I, I, I think they did that to appease, appease me for sending back my OC orders. So you jumped over corporal to sergeant? Yeah. All right. Great. Um, did the woman that went overseas come back safely? You yes, she did. She did. Did you she know? She came from Stronghurst, Illinois, and she visited me here. Did you? So did you, did you know of any casualties in the group of women that you served with? I'm sorry? Were there any casualties from going overseas in the group of women you served with? Not that I know of. Okay. You were awarded medals. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Well, that, that, that that's just for being where you are uh, during the period different type of medal for each service. You wrote down Good Conduct Medal? Yes. Uh, American Theater Campaign Medal? Yes. And World War II Victory Medal? Yes. So they give those out depending on how long you were in the service? Is that what you're saying? Yes. You along. Automatically. To, if you're in the area where it Um, okay. So now these questions about life in the service. Do you want to take a break? No, I'm all right. Okay. How did you stay in touch with your family? My mother wrote to me every weekday. Every day? Every day. Okay. And your brothers, you said, were in the service. Did you get to speak to them? Thank you, Your brothers that were in the Army, did you get to see them? I got to see my younger brother, who was at, when I was at Fort Oglethorpe, and he was at Georgia Tech. All right. But but what they did with him, after they put him in that program, he was in it for almost a year. All of a sudden, they just disbanded it because they needed more help, and they sent him overseas with an advanced division with no basic training. Oh, he got to skip that. Yes. Did he come back and safe? And he, he was, uh, he was in the third platoon of an engineer's, engineer's division. And uh, the Remagen Bridge was uh, uh, torpedoed or whatever they did to, 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 to destroy it. And the first platoon was, all of them had been on it, and he was in the third platoon, thank God. But when he got home, he had nightmares over that. Hmm. He did come home safely. And your other brother came home too? 
Thank you. Your other brother came home too yes. safely. Uh, when you you became uh, uh, when you finished officer candidate school, what were you a uh, ensign? No. What's the army title for after officer candidate school? What kind of officer were you? What kind of officer? Yeah, sergeant. You were a sergeant, and you went to what? I was a sergeant until I was uh, was a, became an officer. And what was your title then when you were an officer? Lieutenant? Uh, no, we were candidates. And after school, what did they call you? After lieutenant. You lieutenant? Yes. Okay. And, and eventually you became a second lieutenant. Was that a promotion from, is there first lieutenant and second lieutenant? No. Yeah. It goes second lieutenant, first lieutenant. Oh, okay. So you were a second lieutenant. Okay. Got that the wrong way. So you, became, you came out of officer candidate school and were a second lieutenant. And where did you go from there? I went to El Paso. And what did you do there? I was uh, a headquarters company commander, and I was a military personnel officer. And what did that mean? What did you have to do? Well, I had a charge of 100 women who worked in an army hospital. William Beaumont General Hospital, and uh, also uh, in the afternoons, I went. I worked in the military personnel office, processing, processing papers. Was the personnel nurses? Beg your pardon. Were you in charge of the nurses as in that title? No. The other staff would have been the cleric, more the clerical staff no, you were in charge no, of? No, the nurses were in a separate unit. So you were in charge of 100 women? Who worked either as uh, bedpan commandos. Oh, okay. That was what they were called? What else? What else did they do? And technicians. Technicians. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, X-ray and stuff like that, that that they were trained to do. Yeah. They they had training schools for them. And you were assigned. You were responsible for their scheduling and. Um, That's right. Anything to do with working in the hospital. Yes. How long did you do that job? A year. And that was. Do you remember the year? What year that was? Yes, I from forty five to forty six. I didn't even, did we even ask what year you enlisted? I don't think I wrote that down. What year did you enlist? What, what year did you enlist? November 4th, 1943. Okay. So you became a second lieutenant in 1944? No, 45. 45. And then you did that job from 45 to, what did you say you did that job from? Year forty six. Forty five to forty six. Just a year. November fifth to November sixth. What did you do after November forty six? Did you was that the end of your service? Yeah, that was yes. Okay. So you stayed uh, most of your time was in Texas at that hospital. Yes. At the uh, William Beaumont General Hospital in Texas. You did put down Iowa here. When were you in Iowa? Beg your pardon? You put down that you were in Iowa? Yeah, Fort Des Moines. Officer Candidate School. Oh, that was Officer Candidate. Okay. That's how you got to see all these states. Okay. Um, tell us the story about your dog. We've Thank you, Mayor. Tell us the story you were giving us before about your dog. And the post office? Oh, about my dog? Yeah. 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 He's a little Scotty dog. Do you remember Scotty? No. How could you? You weren't born yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and at any rate, my father had been in a little office that's next to the Thor where Thornhill Struck Store used to be. And taking orders for coal, for coal, 
But then he went into the, uh, uh, what, do, what is Grumman? Aerospace. Aerospace. What, what is Grumman? It's an aerospace company. Yeah. Where they, he did it. They were all enlisting, uh, enlisting. They were all going to work in these places where they made, uh, let's see, war, war materials and stuff. Grumman was one of them. And he went to work there, so my mother went down to do, in that little office to do the, the, uh, take the, the orders for the coal. And uh, so they would call her up at, when my dog got down there at the, at the post office and they couldn't get him to move. She said, they, they, why am I sorry? They would call her and she would come and get the dog. And why was he at the post office? Yes, yes. Like, tell, them, tell them on camera why he was at the post office, you're doing. Beg your pardon? Tell, tell us why he was at the post office. Why I? Why the dog was waiting at the post office. Because I, I used to take him down there with me sometimes. When you worked there? Yes. I wanted to just get that on camera. Okay, uh, what was the food like in the service? Well, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't... Did you eat in the hospital? Hospital food? No, we, we had our own mess halls. So you, had, you were on a base. Was the hospital on the base? Yes, uh, uh, for, for Clemson it was, but uh, at, in El Paso, uh, uh, the uh, hospital, William Beaumont General Hospital, was uh, a ways away from there, and it was Fort, Fort Bliss was right adjacent to it too. But we were out like in the desert with mountains that were bare. It was, all I could think of was. The handsome avenue with all the trees. And oh. yeah. what I, was, I was very homesick there. Uh, yeah. What was the name of that base where you were? Did uh, it have a, its own we, name? We, we were in General Hospital. But where you slept, did it have a different name where, you was, where your barracks were? Fort, Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss was where you were. But yeah. you were out in the desert area. Yes. Okay. Oh, so you ate out there. You ate at that base, at the at the mess hall. No, I ate at, at the hospital base. Oh, you did. Oh yes, we we had our, our barracks and our uh, were all attached to the uh, hospital. Oh, it was. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's was there something special you did for good luck? Is one of the questions here. Um, don't know if you have an answer to that. How did people entertain themselves? Well, uh, of course, I had uh, athletic. I I had basketball and I had uh, baseball, and I, I made up teams. And we, of course, Juarez was just across the border there in El Paso. And uh, the Rio Grande was practically a dry riverbed. You could have walked across it. But, uh, but and, uh, I, I took a, a basketball team to, to Juarez and we played there. And, uh, but I, uh, I refereed it. In, they, there was a man who ran the Juarez team, and the two of us, uh, we, we, we had quite a, a, a good game. Mm. So, uh, 
then uh, I had I had the sore paw. I had them uh, playing softball and keep to, to try and get them to to to, to, to be happy. <laughs> Well, some of them weren't after they got in. Not too happy to be in Texas, maybe? Yes. Were you still homesick? Did that ease for you? Well, I wasn't happy in Texas. No. When I reported to the headquarters of the 8th Service Command, the uh, colonel said to me, where would you like to be stationed? I said, the East Coast. He said, sorry, you're going to El Paso, Texas. Did you get home at all during your service? Yes, every six months. Oh. For a week. That's a garbage man. Noisy. Um. Okay. Um. What did you do on leave? But you didn't get... Uh, leave you'd come home from. Yes. Yeah. Did you get to travel anywhere else while you were stationed in Texas? No. no. Do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual event while you were there? Humorous or unusual event? Well, just uh, when the war was uh, declared over, that's How'd that feel? It felt pretty good. I'm sure. Oh, and the day that uh, Roosevelt died. What was the reaction then? Well, everybody felt sad. Did you? Uh, the people, the men and women in that hospital, were they wounded? They were coming from the war and they were wounded? At Fort McClellan, they were just people who got sick and stuff. But at Fort, at William Ball, Walmart, they were coming back from the Pacific. And, and, uh, and then that was another thing I did. I used to walk the wards from doing military personnel work because a lot of them hadn't gotten their pay in, uh, because, because they'd been transferred and so forth. And we made partial payments and I would walk the wards for the veterans and give them their checks. They were happy to see you. Yes. <laughs> that was a nice job. Yes. That was a good job. Yeah. Um, do you have any photographs from that time, from your days there? No, I don't. No. Okay. Did you keep a personal diary while you were in the service? I'm sorry? Did you keep a personal diary while you no. were in the service? Okay. Were you glad to see your service end? Being in L, in L, on that desert, I, I was. <laughs> and did you come right back to Sayville, New York? Yes. Oh, I should tell you, too, that I was at uh, William Beaumont. I was sitting next to a, a physical therapist at, uh, at the Mess Hall. And uh, I know I looked. She had a letter alongside of her, and I just happened to look down. I saw the Sable postmark, and I said, "Who do you know in Sable?" Julie Wilbur was her sister. Okay. I don't know if you don't know Julie or not. Well, anyway, she lives on Green Avenue, three 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 Green Avenue. But. Uh, that was amazing. She, they were both from. She and her sister were both from Wisconsin, and and Julie had been a speech therapist, and 
that Tom Harris from Sable, who was in the war, he was an officer. He, he had lost his speech from a bomb that exploded in the room. And she was his speech therapist, and she married him. And wound up in Sable? Yes, and wound up in Sable. That's a really fun story. <laughs> Any other people you remember that you met, that you served with, or met in the hospital? That no. stand out in your mind? No. Who were some of the other women that were in the Army with you, do you remember? Who were some of them? Lieutenant June Cooper mm -hmm. and uh, Velma Steflik. Velma? Velma mm -hmm. Steflik. Did you keep in touch with June Cooper after the service? Uh, with a couple of them. Oh, Leslie Flynn. I still keep in touch with her. You still do? Yes. Where does she live? She's in Florida now. Okay. Her husband died. So she still shares your memories. That's great. So what did you do in the days and the weeks after you came out of the service? I went back to work in the post office. Okay. The job was waiting for you? Yes. Were you postmaster at that point? No. No. How many years later did you become postmaster? Oh, quite a few. I see, forty-six, twenty years. Okay. So you were there over twenty years. So, uh, did you join a veterans organization when you came out of the service? No. No. And did you take advantage of the GI Bill at all? There were no colleges on Long Island. Oh, at the time, in 46. So this is the later years. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? No, I don't think so. Did you attend any reunions? No. Your group, now that the WAX didn't have reunions? No. No, that's a shame. But I am on a list uh, as you go into the National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. There's a board up with all the uh, whack officers. Oh, that's, that's really great. Did you have a picture of that? Have you been there? I don't even have a picture of it. Oh, did you, have you been there to see it? No. Okay. How did your service and But experience? I know I'm there because several people told me. And nobody gave you a picture yet, huh? No. How did your service and experiences affect your life? Well, it made me, it made me aware that life is too long. Of course, when when Gary was born, his father sent me a telegram, and I never got it. Oh, that was your your brother's son? No, my my, my sister's. Your sister's son. Yeah. Okay, that's a shame. But in fact, my brother-in-law gave me those two chairs. He just, you're sitting on. And because I like antiques. <laughs> and that was a gift from your sister's husband? So, yeah. Very, very nice. Is there anything you would like to add about your service experience that we haven't covered in the questions? I don't think so. I want to thank you very much for your time and your memories. And we'll be sending this off to the Library of Congress Veterans Project. Thank you. Thank you.